I feel there's a lot more to do. Oh yeah, I think all subduction zones have the potential to surprise us. If we don't push ourselves, then we're stuck and we can't go nowhere. So there is a kind of sense of responsibility as scientists to go in the area where no one else is going. And hence, improving the quality of life, knowledge, education. This expedition is about trying to uh, understand uh, how earthquake can generate a tsunami. Uh, as, as we keep, this uh, experiment is uh, extremely relevant to our country because we have one of the longest seismogenic zones in the world and it uh, still has uh, implication of uh, disasters along our coast. So it's extremely important. The only problem right now is trying to recover the pickup road. We have uh, the streamers uh, assembled beforehand uh, the operation. That takes us around one hour for a four-man operation. We have to deploy the streamers first, followed by the guns. And it's quite straightforward uh, on the aft deck. We uh, we do it quite quickly without uh, much complications. We're using seismic sound sources called guns here on the Falkor to produce low energy waves to image the sub-bottom seafloor. The guns are pulled behind the Falkor and are charged with high pressure air from a compressor on board. When the air is released from the guns, a bubble forms which oscillates producing low frequency sound waves. The sound waves travel through the water down to the seafloor and penetrate the seafloor. When the sound waves come back up to the surface, they're picked up by a long streamer of hydrophones. And these microphones send the signal back to another computer which then processes the sounds into an image that shows the different layers at the bottom. Geoscientists, we are exciting about subduction zone for quite a few reasons. First one is that the largest earthquake can only occur uh, on our planet Earth in the subduction zone. And also, subduction zone, most of the subduction zone uh, are uh, located within the ocean. So there's potential to have these um, tsunami hazards. But there is a lot of tsunamis. Uh, so first we first Bathymetry is the study of the floor of an underwater body, and in our case, this would be the sea floor. We map the sea floor using a technology called multi-beam echo sounder. The multi-beam will send out a ping of sound towards the sea floor, and this is how we measure our depth. As the ship progresses in the forward direction, the multi-beam keeps pinging, and that builds on us a map of the seafloor topography or the geological structures and features of the seafloor. Here is a seismic image. It, it is acquired by seismic uh, reflection method. Um, so we can see here different uh, sediment layers. Here is a discontinuity in the layers. Possibly suppose that it is a fault. And another interesting feature is this sort of feature here. Two folds 
two vertical folds very close to each other. This is the best part uh, in the survey. The master fold, we call it, and uh, the master fold uh, produce a, a pull part basins and it's because uh, there's a movement. All right, so this is one of our high resolution seismic reflection profiles. Beneath the ocean floor, we have horizontally layered uh, sediments. We have the uh, mega thrust fault that reaches the, the surface at around here. So this incoming Indo-Australian plate shows evidence of uh, extensional deformation that we see here as normal faults. So this is one of them. But here you have another couple here, 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 which creates some uh, dis vertical disruptions of the sediments and some offsets at the, the top of the basaltic oceanic crust. Here it's imaging the, the, the frontal thrust, the, the active part of the mega thrust. You can see uh, bathymetric heights that are faults, in fact, and here a little fault, the sediments. And you can see here a chaotic deposit, which is a uh, mast wasting. Mast wasting is a uh, submarine landslide. It's very interesting to have submarine landslides close to, close to faults because, in fact, the landslide can be triggered by earthquake. So uh, it can be a good indicator of the activity of the fault. research vessel uh, for me personally is a dream job. I think a lot of people who are working in um, ocean science might have been influenced by um, the old TV series of Jacques Cousteau and everyone was kind of in an adventurous spirit hoping that one day uh, you could be part of such a crew. And, and that is a little bit the spirit which we still try to follow. That's the tradition in which we see ourselves and we hope that we can help with our work to enhance the knowledge uh, of the ocean. And the research that we have, along with other research that already already been conducted by other researchers in this field, have to be combined into uh, one recommendation and the recommendation should be update uh, the uh, government's policy and then the uh, we, have, we also have to empower uh, society to uh, learn and to care about uh, their self in terms of uh, mitigation. Everything should have a practical life. You know, there, it has to, science cannot be just in isolation. Science and society has to go in hand in hand. Of course, we need to dream and think about ideas who are beyond, but end of the day, it, we also have to think about the society. Science needs their time to get proper um, assessed data sets and, um, and if this is a big step in towards that direction, well if that can help to change something for the people in Indonesia on the coast of Sumatra for the future and for, for the possible risk of future tsunamis, well then we have uh, achieved what we went out to do.